is funding my, my travel here and also the Cordex IPOC office because they fund my, my travel. Okay, so there's a whole huge uh, community and scientist uh, team working. So I'm just this one presenting it. Okay, so let's go. Climatological studies using trim data show that in South America it seems to have the most strong intense pers uh, storms in the world. Kind of a strange thing. Why? Whatever. Yeah, it used to be in US. Yeah, but it seems that it's in the South America. Sorry for that, guys. It's also America still, but. So because of that, US NF, uh, National Foundation, uh, National Foundation, uh, whatever, fund, uh, sorry, I forget the names. <laughs> National Funding Science. Uh, so the affairs, but thank you. I forget the. I also mix up the name, the level. Sorry. And the Department of Energy, they fund a project in the area of Cordoba, Argentina, and Mendoza, in Argentina, called Relámpago. And with Relámpago, we're trying to know what's happening in this area, Cordoba, Mendoza. Here is Buenos Aires. Here is Chile. Over there is Brazil. And now down there, we also have floods, hail, and also tornadoes. Okay. And these are the questions that the campaign Land Polocacti are going to try to answer. Okay. Mostly, why are so intense the, com the convection activity down there? Which are different from all the aspects from the US? <clears throat> and how we can also for try to forecast them? Okay, this is a picture from a hailstorm from down there. Okay. So, these are the institutions involved in the project. I mean, mostly North American universities, also North American institutions. There are some Argentinian universities, like mine, the, I mean, Buenos Aires. Also, some instit uh, institutions from South America, also from Argentina. And also some universities from Brazil because they also have some uh, instruments that we can use for the campaign. So in terms of the observations, this is a huge uh, observational program that they will bring a lot of instruments from North America to install them for a short period in South America. So that we have all, almost all North American institutions involved in the observations, which implies uh, Small cast DAOs, soundings. Uh, maybe we even have a kind of a special US 16 scan uh, period during the campaign. Lightning mapping and so on. You can imagine that in South America we don't have so much ob observational uh, uh, networks like uh, we used to have in North America or in Europe. So this is a huge, uh, important uh, in campaign for us. And we try to, to participate a little bit as much as we can. So. This is a schedule of the, of the campaign itself. First of all, it's uh, starting now in August, a uh, hydrological campaign, trying to observe measurements, uh, the changes and the flows in the, in the small river catchments. Then we have ICACTI that will expand much more longer period with show intensity campaign. But the most important one is this period, the AOPs, the intense observational comp uh, campaign, that will start from uh, is it? November 1st till December 6th, 15th, it's these two periods, which implies all this deployment of instrumentals in the zone. Okay. This uh, professional campaign is going to be driven by a forecast that we're going on, on purpose for the area, include, include resolving mode, and we start to make a dry run uh, in, uh, in November 2017, just to try to set up how it's going to work, the briefings, and how we decide where to put the soundings, where to put the, the DAOs, and so on. We try to have a social involvement, a large, uh, and prosperous science from 2018 and beyond. So this is how it looks, a little bit like schematically. This is the Andes. This will be the area of observations. We have all this give equipment that implies CSW reports, CSW DAOs, CSWS, Pods, mobile neural nets, and soundings. For, uh, for me, it's kind of new thing because I'm just a modeler. So when I also saw all these things, that start to think about chasing tornadoes and going back with the track and so on. 
it's quite exactly exciting. Already there are 18 containers in the Buenos Aires Harbor waiting to be deployed. And that implies during the IOPs campaign uh, more, than, more than 70 people in se seven weeks. Okay. This is the area under study. This is Cordoba City, this is Mendoza City. As you can see, they have the, the Andes nearby. And this is the place where the Brazilian people can try to help us do the campaign. Why they don't, didn't come here? South America, it's a plenty of political issues and so on. So if they want to come inside, they have to pay a lot of money for the instruments and, and blah, 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 blah. So they decide, OK, we stay in Brazil. It's much more cheaper. OK. The Carlos Paz will be the, the, the field. The headquarters will be somewhere like this. And each day, there will be a forecast. And each day, we will decide, depending on the forecast, if we are going to deploy all the instrumental in Cordoba or in all the instrumental in Mendoza and where. OK? So. According to try to set up all the all the all this procedure, all this methodology, we set up a dry run uh, um, period in which we make virtual briefings of the campaign. Yeah, to try to uh, set up a com how we will deploy the instrumental, and we test how we share the data and the runs and so on because to be, they have to be on time to be able to make the briefing. We have five different scientific focus. Convection radiation, severe weather, upscale convective prone, black building, and hydrometeors, which means that each forecast will be, from which forecast we have to decide which is the, the topic for that day, and then deploy the instrumental according to that. So it's a lot of things going on at the same time. So in the this dry run, we, per, we perform six different uh, convection permitting work uh, runs for all the same days. Okay, and from all these different, uh, um, even we get uh, help from a uh, um, uh, group. And these are the domains of simulation that we are using different domains for each institution, because the, S the Servicio Meteorológico Nacional is the Met Office, so they were using, they already going on a forecast for the campaign. And this is a kind of the map, a schematic map showing up where they are already site, different sites for the observations. It will be the mountain range nearby Cordoba, and this is Mendoza. So the both main areas. Okay, They are separated about 100 kilometers. So it will mean a lot of traveling around. <coughs> so we have four different domains, six different physics configurations, forcing with different uh, forcings, GFS, RF, era interim, era 5, and different model setups. So the first week, we, have, we run it with five old, already known cases from 2015. And then on the second week, we already make the real-time forecasts. Okay, so I'm going to present something about this, the old cases. So the six old cases, there were strong events in 2015, from November to Sem from December. And they were mainly, f I, sorry, uh, eight, 48 hour simulations. Okay, this is going to be a kind of the map that shows up. This is the kind of a map to decide how to deploy the instruments for that given day. We're trying to simulate this thing every day, OK? So for example, for the case one, from, two thousand, from November 7 to November 9th, this is going to the peak of the, the radar reflectivity in Cordoba, how it w was looking like. And this is how we have the simulations performing in the sounding and that point, OK? Firstly, as you can see, they have different, uh, this is the beginning of the simulation, and this is a 24-hour forecast later. And as you can see, first of all, we show up that there is a huge, uh, uh, wet, much more wetter the, the air interim forcing than the GFS. But the GFS is the forecast, OK? But it's kind of a strange thing. We didn't expect that, that air, air uh, interim will be much more wetter than the GFS. That's something that we start to think about that. And after uh, for 24 hours, we have huge differences between simulations, OK? The, the black lines are observations from the Wyoming University sounding thing, portal, and the color, are, color one are the different simulations. And continuously have the temperature, more or less as usual, as you will expect. We have a nice agreement between observations and simulation, but then we go to immediately we have a huge differences. Only 24 hours later, at cloud resolving simulations. Here you have some of the specification of the simulations. Okay, I will not go in detail on that. And then, for example, have a second example, the sixth case. 
have, a, have the convection initiation, which is one of the topics of the campaign. Here we have the full development of the, of the storms. And then here we have a secondary, uh, I think it was 12, 12 hours later. This is the same case. Here we only have much more simulations. that I perform a simulation forcing with ERA-5. And then I also switch the physics, and I have another member in the runs. In this case, we don't have this huge difference between uh, at the, at the start of the simulations. And 24 later, still we have a, a huge spread. And as you can see, uh, era 5's run is the green one. No, sorry, the, uh, the blue one is quite hugely different than all the rest. And so theoretically, era 5 is much better than era interim. Yeah, but what's going on? It's a lot of things to think about and to look at. Then uh, I came up with this kind of uh, analysis. Because one of the topics is convective initialization, how we measure or how we quantify uh, uh, convective initialization. I thought, why not to check when the precipitation is higher than a given value? So this, how the, the, this looks like in three different runs, the era entering one, the era five, and the one with a, another force, a different model setup. So the colors here are when the convection and uh, the precipitation get that this value, above this value. And as you, so as you can see in the three runs, you have orography induced uh, triggering of the convection, more or less. These are the, the, the precipitation. But then you have different zones, different times, and, and even in one simulation, there is not so much convection going on. OK? So the main result from this dry run com uh, campaign uh, period First of all, we have hugely dif difficulties to get the data on time because we are worldwide. Simulation from the North America, simulation in South America, simulations in, in Greece. It was not possible to have all the six simulations on time for the briefings. So that was a good not thing to know. And there is a large and huge spread of forecasts, which makes it really difficult to s decide where to deploy the instruments. So this is something that we have to th start to think about how to manage all this. So the further work, we are next week we are going to have a new dry run uh, set up, uh, sorry, exercise. So we start to a little bit coordinate the work setups. Yes. Then we can more or less assess why it's going on, or why it's wrong or not wrong. We have to optimize somehow the data transfer and the figures to be able to make the briefings with all the outputs. And then the, in the, my institution, the CIMA and the National Weather Service, they will pre they are start to prepare an ensemble of, with the 60 members of, they're going to prepare an ensemble with 60 members using the GFS and the observational uh, data simulation, which will be done on purpose for the campaign, but that will be kept in Argentina for forecast purposes. So that will be also a good, nice outcome from the campaign. There is a BAMS article, only for the dry run campaign, that it's trying to go on, and we're really getting closer to the campaign. And that's all. Thank you for your attention.